In this recording, we are going to develop the idea of a derivative. A derivative measures the rate at which a function changes and gives the slope of its graph. So we're going to look at derivatives at a point and at tangents. You'll remember the formula that we had in previous recordings for the slope of tangent lines. Slope of a tangent line at P can be approximated using the secant line between P and Q and having H approach zero. The slope of a curve, y equals f of x at a point, x sub zero comma f of x sub zero is the number m equals the limit as h approaches zero of f of x sub zero plus h minus f of x sub zero divided by h, provided that the limit exists. The tangent line to the curve at p is the line through p with this as its slope. Now let's take the curve y equals 1 over x and let's find the slope of the curve at x equals a where a is not 0. a could not be 0 or our function would be undefined. So since we are looking at a equals 0, we're going to look at the limit as h approaches 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a divided by h. So we have just replaced our x sub 0 with a since a is the x value we're looking at here. Well, f of a plus h is what we get when we plug a plus h into our function. So that would be the limit as h approaches 0 of 1 divided by a plus h minus f of a is what we get when we plug a in, so that's 1 over a, and this is all over h. Now since we have um, fractions within fractions, we have a complex fraction. To eliminate the two fractions that we have in the numerator here, we will choose the common denominator. The common denominator will be a plus h times a, and we'll multiply every term, top and bottom, by the common denominator. So this will give us the limit as h approaches 0 of, and we will multiply the first term in the numerator by a plus h times a, and we'll multiply the second term by a plus h times a, and on bottom, since we only have one term, we'll multiply that term by a plus h times a. Now this will eliminate all of our fractions. So this will give us the limit as h approaches 0 of a times 1, which is a, minus a plus h. And that's all over a plus h times a h. Now notice I left the parentheses on the top. I did this so that we would remember to change both signs. So this is minus a and minus h. Since we have a minus a, those will cancel. We'll have the limit as h approaches 0 of negative h divided by a plus h times a h. Now since we have an h on top and bottom, we can cancel those. That will leave us with the limit as h approaches 0 of negative 1 in the numerator and a plus h times a in the denominator. Now we are at a fraction that is not undefined for h equals 0. So we can plug in our 0 and that will give us negative 1 divided by a plus 0 times a. 
a plus zero, of course, is a, so we have negative one over a times a, or negative one over a squared. So the slope of a curve, y equals one over x, and x equals a, is negative one over a squared. So we can choose any a not equal to zero, and we can plug into this formula to find the slope of the curve at that x value. Now, where does the slope equal negative one-fourth? Well, if the slope is negative one over a squared, and we want to know where that is equal to negative one-fourth, then we have a proportion. We can cross multiply negative one times four is negative four, and a squared times negative one is negative a squared. If we divide both sides by a negative one, we'll have four equals a squared. Remember the opposite of square in that number is taking the square root, so we can take the square root of each side. Remember when you take the square root of each side, we have to include both the positive and the negative. And the square root of four is two, so we have to include both positive and negative two, since two squared is four and negative two squared is four. So where a is two and where a is negative two, our graph will have a slope equal to negative one-fourth. Here's a picture of a graph of y equals one over x, and you can see the two points where x is negative two and where x is positive two, and at both points, the tangent line has a slope of negative one-fourth. If we think about this graph further and think about what happens, as we get closer and closer to negative infinity, our tangent slopes are going to become, our tangent lines are going to become flatter and flatter, and so our tangent slopes are going to get closer and closer to zero. As we get close to zero, you'll see that our tangent lines start becoming much more steep. Same is true to the right of zero, we have steep tangent lines, and as we go around toward infinity, our tangent lines become flatter and flatter, and our, our slopes will approach zero.